first you have to make sure your leaders are marked in the center. You can fold them in half and mark it with a pen, um, but make sure you have every one marked, like this one is not is on the underside, and so every one is. Then you want to fold your quilt back, we'll start with the quilt back, fold it in half, put a pin on each side so that you know where the center of the quilt backing is. Then you want to open your quilt backing up and you want to lay it across your entire frame like this. Find the leader that says quilt back on it. Hold the edges together like this, like you're going to make a seam in a dress. And pin right close to the edge, parallel to the edge. You want to put pins all along this, head to tail. So when you're done pinning the quilt back on one side of your leaders, it's going to look like this. Take out the center pin, then we're going to walk around and pin the other end. You're going to do that similar. Take your take-up leader, hold the edge, match the pin to the center point, and pin across like this. The way we're showing you today is going to be how to float a quilt top. And you would do it similarly if we were pinning the entire quilt to this take up rail, but today we'll just float this. Okay, when you're done pinning, it's going to look like that. It's going to have a little lip on it. Take out, I'll leave the center in there, and you want to roll this up. Now if you don't like that noise, Hold this down and you can do it quickly without making the noise. Now we're ready to pin the quilt top. So you want to put a pin in your quilt top the same way we did in the quilt backing. So turn it on both sides, even it up, then we want to pull the leader up to the quilt top. Um, lay this out on your frame similar to the way we did on the quilt back. Pull the quilt, quilt top leader up. Hold the edges even. Get your pins. I usually pin a few inches apart and then I go back and fill in all the odd spots. So just hold it along, pin it evenly. And we can get all the way along. But I do put the pins head to tail so when I go back and fill in these spots, I want to have a good heavy seam, even though I'm going to take it out later. Once your quilt top is pinned on, it will look like this. It will have a little ridge on it there, so the back is like a seam. Just lay it down on the floor. You can, uh, you can roll it up just a little bit. Then we're going to put the batting. Batting comes next. Cut a piece of batting a few inches wider than your quilt top. I'm going to lay that, I'm going to put the straightest edge on top, I'm going to lay that right on top of our quilt backing right there. I'm going to take the batting and put it in between this, just like that. I'm going to pick up your quilt top, where you have a pin in there where it's marked in the center, you want to match that up. Lay this down evenly right on top of your quilt backing. You want to be able to see your pins, so hold your batting down here like this so that you know exactly if you have it square. You want to lay that nice and flat, then we're just going to pin baste it. I'm going to pin it out here so that when I run the sewing machine along the edge to just tack it in place, I don't run into pins. Okay, now this is laying here. You're ready to have your sewing machine. What you'll want to do is take a small stitch, a little serpentine stitch, all the way along this edge, pulling out that pin, pulling out that pin, all the way along, and then you can pull out these pins and tighten everything up and put your bungee clamps on the side. One thing that's really important is that your pins are showing on the top on this take-up rail. When we're all done with our quilting and we're taking our quilt off, you want to be able to just pull them out easily. And remember, it makes a little ridge here. There's 
You're pinning edge to edge. You're not overlapping anything. This is called floating a quilt top, where I didn't actually pin the quilt top into this take-up rail. I could have gone to the back and held all the layers together and pinned those together. Now I'll take this undone and go to you another option for, for pinning the layers together. What you'll have to do is loosen up this quilt backing rail because we want to have some ease in there. And you want to walk around to the back of the quilting frame. Take your pins, pick this up, hold all of these together, match the pins in the center. Now, of these pins that are here, I'm going to gently pull them out and pin through all four layers. The quilt leader, the quilt back, the batting, and the quilt top. I'm going to do that all the way along the edge. I'm just going to pull them out just gently, push them back in from the back. So just take it gently out, pin it through all the layers, hold your edges evenly. So see how that's just right there? Pin just slightly away from the edge, making sure you catch every bit of that. Then go back to the center and work your way the other way. There are a few reasons why you might pin quilts on differently. I like this way because it makes a nice um, easy line for you to do. Try to put that quilt back in again to get it nice and tight. And I want to do the same to that quilt top. The reason you might float a quilt instead of pinning it all together, if you notice, this is nice and flat now. And when you want to, when you're quilting, you want to roll it up and get it right into the quilting area. Then you'll want to put your bungees on the side. But the reason you might float a quilt top is if you have a scalloped edge. And you can't pin into that scallop, so you want to lay it gently on the quilt batting, put a few pins, gently stitch it down on the edge, and then you didn't have to pin it. But see this nice ridge this makes? This makes it so you can quilt up to a quarter inch away, and then that leaves a place for your binding, so that your binding doesn't run in over into your nice quilting. I'd quilt a star design in each of these stars. I would quilt a feather in it, this little border, and probably a leaf design with blue thread in this little um, inner One thing about tightening your quilt when you're quilting on a, a hand quilting frame or a machine quilting frame, it doesn't need to be so tight that a quarter will bounce off of it. You want to have a little bit of give in here. It helps the machine work better and it allows you to make nice stitches without the stitches popping. So have it be a little bit soft in the quilting area. Mm -hmm.